Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and we've got some uh, major announcements just before we start with our remarkable guest uh, and uh, uh, researcher, computer genius, uh, and believer, uh, Alexander Bachman. Firstly, we want to announce our, we now have our Teloderm anti-aging cream and Teloderm anti-aging soap. Those will be coming on within a week. These are the most powerful anti-aging uh, creams, and uh, uh, they also work well with our Myco D2. In fact, the Myco D2 is in the component. The Teloderm cream is amazing. Uh, it literally reverses aging of your skin. Not just slows it, but reverses it. The Teloderm soap also has the same components. That will be coming on. We are getting the finalization of the steps uh, for our eye formula called IC. That will be coming on this year as well. That's E-Y-E-S-E-E. Anybody who's on CAN-C will be switching over. Uh, the CAN-C is the most remarkable formula. I take it every day, and I can tell you, if you don't take care of your eyes in the area now, we have two new bands in the ultraviolet range and the uh, outside in the winter and summer that are burning your eyes. All the oxidative stress, scalar stress from cell phones, Wi-Fi networks, smart meters, etc. You've got to protect your eyes because blindness, cataracts, glaucoma, all these other things as an aging population is a big deal. I want to get right into some big news. And, uh, and someone on the cutting edge of that all the time is Alexander Bachman. Alexander, let's start off with some of the news in Mexico. And again, you're doing some research. I don't know how much you want to talk about it yet, but we also have uh, lots of things going on. We had the hearings by, I call her Hitlery uh, Clinton, who's literally the most evil person I've ever physically met on earth in my entire life, uh, giving testimony after she supposedly had some neurological event after a fall, which you know they're lying. And uh, trying to not only be uh, outraged that they would ask her questions, but literally stomping around in a sense verbally when she's uh, questioned by uh, by Senator Rand Paul and uh, John McCain and others, uh, questioning her competency and the fact that she should be fired. And uh, she says she never saw them on her desk. I mean, you're either one thing or another. You're either incompetent or evil. There's no in-between in this situation. Do you have any comments to make about Hillary Clinton's testimony before the committee? Uh, Killery, Shillery, Hitlery. I mean, so many uh, names that this woman uh, has uh, got for herself now. Well, basically, you know, uh, she's on the hot chair because uh, somebody has to go. Somebody has to pay the price for Benghazi. So it couldn't uh, go at a at a better time for uh, President Obama to get rid of her after her uh, mishap, uh, which, in fact, people say that what happened uh, with her head had to do with something with a Iran in a secret meeting that she that she held over there, and uh, she had a, a misnomer on the airplane. So we know that uh, the Hillary Clinton uh, is a very valuable asset for the Illuminati within the White House. <clears throat> she's, well, she's, she's she's the grand dame of the uh, of the Masons in North America. She's yeah, the grand she dame. Has, she she literally has, is the head uh, female Mason of the Western world. To be honest with you, she is the head female Mason. Yes. Uh, Right. And she, she, she obviously, you know, knows the tricks of the trade. She's a consumer. She's a genius. She's, she's not stupid. The woman is not no, stupid, she's not. but she's incredibly evil, and she's definitely a genius level. She's not stupid. I got to meet her personally, and I can tell just looking at her eyes. This woman has got clues, but she's dangerous. Yeah, but she just works for the CFR. I mean, she's a, she's the basically the liaison for the CFR trilateralist and all of these people within the the deep stuff. You know, the Jason Intelligence Community, the Mitre uh, Group, all these secretive uh, uh, Iron Mountain type, ironclad uh, thinking groups within DC, the Brookings Institution. All these people, okay, are directly connected to Hillary Clinton. She's an extension of Dick Cheney inside the. White House. Basically, that's how I lay it out on the table, you know? Yeah, you, you mean, uh, well, we call him uh, in the physical realm Dick Cheney, otherwise known as the Dark Lord or the Sith Lord of the Empire of America. Yeah, another another evil man. I mean, if you just research uh, the the evil atrocities that uh, Dick Cheney is responsible for, just uh, look up Kathy O'Brien, Dick Cheney, and Mexico just for that. And uh, we know that all of 
these people behind the scenes are something other than what they they come out to be in the in the front line. Now, when they sit in the hot chair, they get upset because they're they never do anything wrong. What's wrong with accepting wrong? What's wrong with accepting that all these weapons that are being uh, sold uh, now officially into Mexico into the cartels are fueling this drug war down here, and everything is going awry. Everything is going south. This is worse. This is worse than the than the Iran Contra hearings. This is worse because you, you have impunity uh, at the highest levels. Nobody's gonna pay except uh, just a little well, slap yeah. on the wrist, and let's move on. Right. I, I didn't even really see uh, what I call all the questions I would have asked asked by the people that are supposedly we're going to put it to her. I mean, I hear that we're going to fire you or this or that. How about you need to go to prison for what you did <clears throat> when there needs to be impeachment proceedings against you and Obama? The fact that she's out of the, uh, the firing line and they put this idiot that was literally answering all the questions after in all the news media and the Sunday morning shows, uh, Rice, I think is just a good distraction from the fact that she would like, if she's physically well enough, which she isn't, to run as a female presidential candidate in 2016. And if you think Obama's bad, let me tell you, if she becomes president, you can't imagine how bad it'll get. No, she. I don't. I don't think she'll get that far in, un, unless they have. No. Well, she does have access to the super sciences that the Illuminati has. But I mean, uh, when we have congressmen uh, coming out publicly, like Paul uh, Brown, all right, coming out and saying that uh, uh, that Obama only upholds the Soviet Constitution. I mean, those are big statements. Big statements. Right. I think. So, so dealing with that now, let's switch gears for a second. We have the drug war. You're an expert on the drug war and the war in Mexico. We have the Zeta cartel is directly linked to Hezbollah. We are fully aware of this. We had fast and furious bring down thousands of guns. Nobody's prosecuted. Eric Holder, his junior uh, officers within the Department of Justice are not going to do a damn thing about it. Obama is like the Teflon man. He just has that broad grin of the Joker or, or uh, Vlad the Impaler, you know, as he sees more people impaled before his castle. Uh, it really is sickening, but these people seem to be able to avoid any kind of prosecution or even guilt. It's amazing, isn't it? It is amazing. And, you know, the, the, the other thing, I mean, it's impunity at the highest levels. I mean, the narco state is the United States. I mean, why just point the finger at Mexico? Look at the United States. The distribution center of all narcotics now arrives to Chicago as the main hub. This is uh, with, uh, as disclosed by Mexican diplomats. Do you know where else, uh, the, uh, you know where else it comes through? Do you know yeah, where else the, the drugs come through? The emails, right? Do you know where the else the drugs go through? Yeah. See, see if you can guess. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. This is a guessing game for those those people okay. that are listening. Well, not not the only distribution. <laughs> well, there's multiple there's multiple places. Chicago is one of them, but the uh, mean Arkansas is one. But one of them is, of course, the U.S. military bringing them into naval ships and special lock containers. The other is Hercules C-130, and the distributing mission point inside the United States is, believe it or not, Look, Mexico can't operate without the drugs now. Mexico right, but, but, is a drug blood economy. Right. It operates actually through distribution sites for the bookstores that are tied to the Mormon church. And guess who owns the Mormon church? It is the Church of Rockefeller. Okay. Well, there you go. There's a tie-in with the Rockefellers again, because uh, Hillary right. is tied to the Rockefellers. She's, she's like the granddaughter of, uh, uh, of uh, David Rockefeller. Right. Right, you know she's and like all these people. God, his goddaughter. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so what we have is a situation here where the, these people I refer to, because people have to understand the spiritual technology which these evil ones and the globalists uh, know. These people appear to be like us, but they are rulers of clay and iron. The clay of human flesh stretched over the transdimensional demonic entities of iron. These higher powered spirits that don't have mortality like us. They're not immortal, but they certainly don't have a limited lifespan. They're malevolently evil, super intelligent, and absolutely bent on, hell-bent on omnicide of mankind and our planet. Well, you know, talking about omnicide, we'll talk about nukes uh, heading the, on the headlines all over the border again, chatter about nuclear confrontations coming. Really? Yep. Back in a moment with Alexander Bachman. Welcome back, 
And um, one of the things that um, we try to explore in this program is that uh, there's some things that most shows, including even shows like Coast to Coast Radio, will touch the edges around. We'll get actually deeper. The fact is that the Southern Air Defense, and I want you to expand on this, uh, Alexander, Obama is shutting down our Southern Air Defense, which is our defense against nuclear weapons. This is a time when, by the way, when uh, in, I think it was six or seven years ago, North Korea launched three missiles at America. One la- landed on the coast of Alaska within 120 miles of, of Anchorage, the capital. The uh, North Koreans can strike with their current missiles, although it's not targeted unless they have targeting technology from the Chinese or some other country, like Iran, which does have targeting technology, an ability to actually strike a specific target. But if they fire it, the population center is, is so heavy in California, they can fire it within, say, 50, 60 miles. They're going to hit something that's going to cause a lot of death and destruction. Look, this is, this is the worst-case scenario that we were waiting for. A communist invasion from within, bluntly and openly, Obama is going to shut down the southern air defense systems of the United States of America, and, quote, it will be open season for terrorists flying in with nukes, low-altitude missiles, or even full-scale invasion of America. Now, we know that the U.S. government is continuing <clears throat> to expand surveillance and monitoring, monitoring systems uh, in billions of dollars along the borders. But, you know, with this announcement, with the, regard to the southern air defense systems, you know, people are getting jittery. Uh, you know, NORAD is saying, what's going on here? Well, it turns out they're going to shut it down completely. It's uh, according to Excellus Systems Corporation, the company that built and jointly maintains these balloons that uh, fly across the border, and they're along the border, and they regulate smuggling routes and all of that stuff, and they they monitor, uh, you know, low uh, low flying ide- uh, aircraft, missiles, or anything can penetrate the U.S. airspace. Well, they're going to shut down that. that that system. And uh, according to this uh, company, this corporation called Excellus Systems, uh, because they built these things, uh, the U.S. Air Force uh, is going to shut it completely down. Now, let's, do the, let's look at all the, Is there a twisted logic behind this, or is it just plain evil? No, I think it's uh, I think it's the same thing that happened, and I have it there on my website. If you do some research under terrorism at alexanderbachman.com, we did an extensive study on on the situation uh, and the security assessment of the United States. It's the same thing that Obama did, like. Uh, uh, two years ago, um, in 2011, where, you know, there's a, there's a special group of uh, counterterrorism within the United States that goes around the world to seize any um, open threat of selling uh, enriched uranium to any terrorist organization. This, is, this was like a, a covert operation, but not that covert. But they, they would go to South Africa and stop any transaction. Uh, Need be uh, to to stop uh, terrorists uh, gaining control of any. Look, there's, a, there's nuclear materials everywhere. I talked to four years ago to someone who actually got real good intelligence about someone selling a bathtub of, of former Soviet radioactive material, literally in a bathtub in a hotel yeah. in the Czech Republic. In uh, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, and and basically. <laughs> When this literally, there's so much nuclear material around. The only reason why something doesn't happen is even the Muslims understand that if they do anything, they're dealing with nations like America that'll just nuke them into annihilation. Yes, I understand that, but the the situation is still. I mean, when Obama says, you know, we're we're not going to finance any more this uh, agency within the United States that's going to be in charge of nuclear security anymore. Well, first off, none of the containers that come into America, the seals are broken. None of the they don't have radiation detection, and this is the, you know, the border is not protected against truck traffic or traffic coming in from Hutchins Wampo that controls every single port in Mexico. These trucks now can just zip right across the U.S. and Mexican border and go all the way to Chicago or Atlanta or Kansas City. Uh, there's really nothing to stop. And we're not talking about suitcase nuke. We're talking about container-sized nukes, uh, armored personnel carriers, anything you want to stick inside a trailer, include guillotines, etc. The fact is they are arming the teeth, and I've heard that the primary source of armaments built to spec for the gangs in America is with the assent of the American government, these special op programs, 
coming in from Mexican ports like Long Beach, California, and through Mexico. Now, this Aerostat system, which is called a tethered Aerostat radar system, TARS, T-A-R-S, is going to be shut down. And here's what an employee from Excel has had to say about the official shutting down of this project uh, by, by Obama. Not only will this closure mean hundreds of people will be out of jobs, but it also means our borders will, be not, will not be safe, especially along the remote U.S.-Mexico border like in Texas. These defense radars detect low-flying aircraft infiltrating our borders. Without these defense radars, low-flying aircraft will go undetected. Or Do drone, or drone. On one cruise, here? Right, well, right. well, cruise drones, for example, you could be sitting uh, in a base inside Mexico, hundreds of miles from the border, start off cruise drones that fly literally a thousand feet off the ground, and they're whipping in at, say, a Mach one and a half, you know, a thousand plus miles an hour. Uh, you won't even hear the sound boom when they come in over your city, and they could be carrying a payload of ricin, uh, nuclear materials, uh, dirty bomb material, biological weapons, or nukes. And people have no idea that these things are coming. Literally flying death. Well, this is the, this is the worst case scenario because this was what, what I was afraid of. In 2004, we were contacted by a businessman in Pasadena who has businesses in, along uh, Tijuana and Mexicali who contacted us because a terrorist organization uh, belong well, it was Al Qaeda based. Uh, Al Qaeda is operating in the Sonora Desert. We're going to say it again. It's operate. It was operating a cell along Mexicali and Algodones, and Thanks to that information, we got out to the appropriate channels uh, in 2006, 2007. They even made a movie about this uh, uh, called Act of Valor. All right? Oh, yeah, the one that was, it was a big uh, screen uh, movie as well in the theaters. Okay, that's because of the information that we put out. All right? Now, what's happening, by the way, this is just to highlight what you're saying here, Alexander. There's three questions the government agencies that listen to this program, believe it or not, all of them, not only in America, Canada, Britain, etc., Interpol, listen. They ask three questions. Who is Deagle having on this show? Why are these experts asking these questions? And how the hell do they know them? The answers. Well, well you know, we have very, very good uh, <laughs> good people, you know, that uh, trust and us and, it's and good we are credible. It's good because what it does is helps them to crystallize issues because a lot of time. The biggest problem I found working as a <coughs> contract <coughs> civilian for, with government agencies, they don't talk to each other. They don't even kind of brainstorm with each other to say, oh, gee, we got assets here in space and we got assets there. I mean, for Obama to do this, obviously, this is very malevolent. It's like, let's put it this way, it's like the ancient Babylonian Empire leaving the gates open for the invaders. This is what the employee from uh, from Excel says. It will be open season, quote, for any drug, gun, slave smugglers, terrorists, flying in with nukes, low-altitude missiles, or even a full-scale, low-elevation invasion attack against America. End quote. This is serious. Yeah. That's really crazy. Man. Um... It won't make your day, it's going to ruin your day, but we better tell you the truth so you can tap the politicians on the shoulder and say, what the hell are you guys doing? Still playing games by kicking the can down the road financially, and our borders are open by the abominator? The Terminator is what he is. Back in a moment. You're amazing. Welcome back to the Nutri Medical Report. We have Alexander Bachman, who's also on uh, Fridays. Alexander's often on the program uh, with some of our pastors, like Pastor Dave Lee, who's on there at least twice a month. Uh, Alexander, you have a. This is posted now on alexanderbachman.com on your website. Where is it located under uh, headlines? Under headlines, uh, you just scroll below. I mean, there's a section of articles, downloads, and then you'll see uh, some interviews that we have uh, on the Nutra Medical Report with Deborah Tavares. Right below that, you'll see uh, headlines in yellow, and you'll see North Korea says nuke tests target U.S. Now, right below that, it says U.S. Max border security, Obama to shut down southern air defense systems. It will be open season for terrorists, and this is what I'm getting at. You know, when I got when I got wind of the situation <laughs> along Mexicali, Calexico border, and the real imminent, clear, present danger that these Al Qaeda cells are operating all along the border, 
uh, and uh, hiring Mexican scientists, I'm going to say this again, in order to put together and arm a biological dispersant device that would be deployed using low altitude flying aircraft, Cessna yeah, you can aircraft. You can have a Cessna or, or even a drone. Eh? In other words, you can easily take a toy plane that's a fairly large one, five or six feet across, with a canister of a biological weapon, and you can have a horrifying effect over a city or town. The, but the, the plan is to deploy it over uh, major population centers. We were contacted by this person, this businessman in Pasadena, because he, uh, this doctor that fled from the Al Qaeda cell, okay, was distraught beyond measure, and um, and basically they hired him under uh, by force to assemble the weapons. And these are, this is a biological weapon that would be deployed over Los Angeles, Phoenix, and Austin, Texas, and other mentions. But they would be deployed from well, Algodones, Algodones, right in, very close by to Mexicali. Okay, let, let me uh, just jump the rails a little bit. Remember the story that uh, Alexander, uh, sorry, Alex Jones put up a, a few weeks ago with uh, uh, Mr. McAfee. The uh, genius kind of security officer for McAfee uh, antivirus systems. And he was down in, um, I believe, in... Uh, Guatemala, uh, Belize. He, he was in Belize uh, working on trying to extract different uh, molecules from, you know, pheromones and herbals and other things. And, of course, they tried to say they were going to prosecute him for drugs and so on. He wasn't making drugs. And But what, he, what happened is he donated 75 laptops and then eventually he got his virus into 250 government computers, roughly, and he unveiled a scheme between the Zeta cartel and the U.S. government, uh, CIA, to actually make enough um, ricin, neurotoxin, which, by the way, there's no cure for ricin, no known cure. I mean, I'm sure we can work on trying to figure something out, but what it does is cause a progressive mitochondriopathy that shuts your mitochondria down, and you know, you die within usually two days. And you, it, it comes on so slowly you wouldn't know because it doesn't all of a sudden at the time you're exposed to the ricin, you don't know. The amount of ricin they've made apparently is enough to kill every person on earth. And uh, their plan is to Zeta Kurt, tell to bring it in with the drug uh, lords to bring the drugs across into the U.S. So the fact that they're closing these drug borders and they're closing down the southern uh, uh, air defense system tells me they want to make sure that the adequate amounts of drugs and or the ricin gets in. And I think the counterstrike will be once they kill a number, number of Americans, the, the very high likelihood is America will invade Mexico and take over Mexican territory. That's what my guess is. They always work by dialectics. In other words, you have to say, create a scenario, you open up the borders like open up the gates of Babylon, which is what America is. America is modern Babylon. And then American special forces and NATO, et cetera, move in and just crush the heck out of the drug cartels and take over a Mexican territory. That's what I think is coming. Yeah, they want to synthesize the ultimate uh, collapse scenario, and one of them is getting attacked in the sun front. It's just ridiculous. If we take into account what I just said about uh, the, the deployment uh, mechanisms of they want to use low-flying altitude aircraft, whatever it means, be it um, unmanned or manned, uh, they want to fly them across the border. This is a clear threat. And when we see these stories pop out where officially, you know, they want to they want to shut down. Well, it's already going to be shut down. The southern air defense systems well what does that tell you about your own government <laughs> right <laughs> this is like saying you know i'm gonna i'm gonna remove all policemen from uh, from the the worst um the worst neighborhood in East LA, let's say. I'm going to remove all policemen, <laughs> definitely. And then we'll then, then then recommend everybody on the radio go for a walk in that area of town. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go to a Griffith Park and have some fun. And so, what's going to happen? What's going to happen here is that they're they're going to come at you. I mean, yeah, exactly. They're going to come. Yeah, they're going to say just yeah. uh, plain mathematics. They're going to come at you. Well, this is all all by design. And people say, just like for example, the stupid responses by Hillary Clinton to the issues of Benghazi, look, this is a transshipment point for arms. This is a place where they're getting armaments to take down the Syrian government. What we have is regime change sponsored by the Qataris, the Saudis, and the Arab Emirates, which is a long process of a five-year subverse of a war between Shiite and Shia Islam. And these characters are backed by the Western bankers, and they want to put in a caliphate, literally as it says in the Bible, the king of the south, 
they want to transform America into this clenched titanium fist. And you can imagine how mad Americans will be if, say, 100,000 or a million Americans die from biological or weapons like sarin nerve, like, like ricin. Uh, how quickly America will be like the, the Fourth Reich. And I really see America as a swing back from Obama is getting far more conservative than any time in American history. I, I think that America, they want to piss off Americans. That's why the speech last week by Bill Clinton was very prophetic. The chances of Obama and any of his minion idiots uh, seizing guns by, by SWAT-teaming Americans that won't turn them in, especially veterans, is uh, as, about as likely as a lobster getting out of a pot when he's already cooked. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It doesn't matter what laws they have. Even Sheriff Opaya says he may not. I mean, what, what the sheriffs all across this country are going to enforce federal law if they try to do it. And even in the state of New York, we have reports from John Moore. will be back on tomorrow. He says his reports are from law enforcement officers, special forces, and SWAT teams. They're terrified to try to start enforcing these laws. If they start SWAT teaming people because they won't turn in their guns, and they have a list of guns that need to be, quote, re-registered, these officers... Even off-duty, you're going to be targeted. I don't want this to happen, neither fellow Americans, but if you start enforcing laws that are a violation of constitutional rights, you're going to have problems. And especially if you bring in foreign troops that speak with funny accents to American soil, we're going to kill them quick. Let's keep it straight here. They're not going to live very long. They're going to have a half-life of butter on their counter. They're not going to live long. Just the cover of Newsweek, Newsweek magazine this week says it all, the second coming, uh, referring obviously to Jesus Christ and trying to put Obama as another Jesus here, like a savior of mankind. I don't know what no, no, I think. I think it's just he, I, and I think that Obama is very evil, but I don't know if he's the ultimate evil. No, what I see not. him doing, I, what I see Obama is almost like a forerunner, like John the Baptist, of what's really coming. And I'm concerned we're not going to have what we call a leftist, you know, you know, bathhouse guy that's promoting drugs and weird, you know, abortion and everything. We're going to get something even worse. We're going to get a switch back to something that's so ultra conservative, so over the top Nazi that, it, you know, it's going to get nuts. And uh, especially if they allow us to be hit by these terrorists, you're going to see America. America will be very much like, I would say, Israel, where everybody's walking down the street with an Uzi machine gun a flak jacket on, and a real bad attitude. And this is worse. With China right now actively and openly deploying uh, Russian-made low-altitude strategic bombers, designing EMP weapons, North Korea is doing it, and uh, they can uh, cyber attack the United States. They've already done beta tests. Yeah, yeah, in fact, I talked to people that were looking at the nuclear plants. In the last five years, we've had dozens of attacks by the Chinese. They call them the Blue Army, which are a Tianjin China-centered uh, military force of cybernetic uh, warriors to attack infrastructure in countries around the world, especially in the United States, that shut down and cause station nuclear blackouts, power outages, and burnout systems and physical equipment as well. And they've made a number of attempts successfully in the last five years. Some, some of the things we say, people say, well, this is a bit here, a bit there. But when you start putting all these pieces together, you start to get an overall picture, which is we're in the economic phase of World War III already, which is Armageddon. One of the things that I received uh, is the keys of unlocking the scripture. People should realize it says in Second Peter uh, 2.10 that no scripture is a private interpretation that it is. Therefore, you have to have the keys of the wisdom of the Most High God in order to unlock it. One of them is there's not going to be three wars, only one. There's not only there's only one great earthquake. There's a quote, a, if you want to call it a rapture, it occurs at the end of the tribulation because it's thermonuclear. I had one lady back in uh, Dallas back in 1999, and I said, Doctor Dagon, I understand. And there was about seven eight hundred people in the audience there in Dallas when I spoke, uh, and uh, Hazy Stevens from uh, the Deepwell Driller was there as well. And uh, this lady came up at the end and she said, I don't understand, Doctor Deagle. Where is the rapture? I said, Well, if you're unlucky enough or lucky enough to be a ground zero when a thermonuclear blast occurs over your city, you're going to say, hello, Lord, that's the rapture. 
Well, we have to understand is what's coming here is they're setting up America to be attacked. They're setting up the United States to have civil detention camps on American soil. They're directly collaborating between the Zeta cartels and the CIA and the drug culture, which is controlled and affiliated with America, to have a fight with the uh, Sinaloa cartel. Uh, I think the Zetas are on the side with the Al-Qaeda, <clears throat> and they, they're literally permitting it, just like they permitted the Saudi-sponsored attack on the World Trade Center. But the bombs were placed in there by the CIA division I call Israeli nuclear Mossad. Basically, the Israelis are very good at putting in micro-nukes. They're involved with the Bali, uh, Indonesia nuclear bomb that went off there in one of their bars, their nuclear weapon. We call low yield. One of these micro-nukes. And those micro-nukes, by the way, were used by the U.S. Army Corps engineers to build underground cities or for uh, excavation deep underground. They're developed by the Army Corps engineers in the 50s and 60s. These have been around for a long time. So what people should understand <clears throat> is the government rules the world through dialectics of destruction and evil, and they always have, quote, their solution ready, which is often very deadly. Uh, and the same way as the kicking the can down the road financially, they're getting ready to damage and destroy what apparently is the American system, but their resurrected new mutant empire will be the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast, and I'm probably the only one that's saying this, but the mark of the beast will come from... America. It's not coming from Canada. It's not coming from Brussels. It's not coming from Moscow or Jakarta or Tokyo. It's coming from the United States of America. And yeah, people need yeah. to grasp that, that America has the power, literally a weapon centuries ahead of any of its enemies. So if something happens and a million Americans die because of something stupid, like a nuclear weapon going off from a you know, container nuke or suitcase nuke, if we have a release of a biological weapon, if we have a release of ricin because of the Zeta cartels are working directly with the people down in Belize to make these weapons, as McAfee says. It's because we knew, and we didn't stop it, just like 9-11, because we totally collaborated. We had the cover of making it look Muslim, when even a lot of these so-called Muslim collaborators, some of them are still pilots, some of them had their identity stolen, some of them are still alive, they're not dead. And in fact, we know from the pictures and the people that are eyewitnesses, these were not commercial American airliners that went into the towers. They were drones they were basically identical E10s that were had pods in the bottom of them that were flown in by Global Hawk remote uh, targeting so that they could actually hit the buildings with beacons inside the towers <coughs> and even those things that strike the towers couldn't have brought them down except high explosives that could literally vaporize and turn the buildings into an atomic vapor so more than a third of the mass of the buildings wasn't even in a debris pile and I presented this data in 2007 I literally had to threaten to sue the Vancouver 9-11 uh, group because they were not going to release it to me because they had changed leadership. The first group brought me in and I did like four, five lectures there. The second group that followed up were purposely trying to make sure that my DVDs of my presentations I couldn't even get a hold, so I just threatened to sue them. So people need to know really what's going on behind the scenes here is we got some really bad evil going on and they're getting ready to do something catastrophic. What Obama is doing is laying the groundwork for American disarmament, American economic dismantlement, destruction of the United States system, and to resurrect it into a global clenched titanium fist to crush any nation on earth and economically the debt monster that he's created and, and his treasury secretary and the, and the uh, Fed uh, chairman. They're designed specifically to destroy the economic system of the entire planet. This is not just America going down. When they, when they destroy this system, what's going to come out of the ashes, the ancient ceremony of this phoenix or the Sumerian ceremony called Pahanuk, they're going to resurrect a system that will be a cashless biometric system where everybody literally is in cyberspace with an economic a thing called a node representing them in cyberspace like the Sims on your video games. And all of the economic data, informational data about you and your buying and selling where you live and everything is kept in a database where everything from your position of your EFA, of your cell phone, to all your buying and selling, to your educational needs, to everything you order, is all in centralized databases. Everybody, Google, Yahoo, <coughs> even companies like Amazon and so on, all this data is being collected and gathered to profile you and to create these database architectures so they have a complete intelligence picture of everybody in the first and second world. And if people think that that's all, that the, the matrix doesn't exist, they're just fools. Uh, there's just no excuse for that level of stupidity. It's a form of stupidity I call, I call vicious ignorance. 
in the face of something that's so obvious? It is obvious, and it's sad. It's sad that we see that one of the greatest nations in the world is collapsing before our very eyes, and it's nobody's not collapsing. doing anything it's about a, it. It's, it's collapsing toward victory. It's collapsing toward being the, the nation-state that is led by the false prophet. It is collapsing toward a bipolar world where Russia becomes a beast dictator of Europe, and America is led by a false prophet that worships the first beast, which is basically the super empire. Now, of 560 uh, Euro- Western Europeans, all the Russians and the former CIS nations, which are primarily Muslim, and the entire population of this entire mag- amalgamated population will be approaching a billion people with far more power than, Ru- than China or America, with far more military might, and with the most advanced technology, including CERN and the super collider, a hadron collider. I mean, this is really dangerous. People don't understand the rise of Europe. And the head of it will be a refurbished and now resurrected beast empire of Russia. And when the, the real Antichrist comes into view, coming out of Europe, then things are going to really get hairy. <laughs> well, it, uh, as I say, I, I don't like to, to put a name of, of a, quote, an Antichrist. I think there's two, in a sense. There is a false prophet and a beast dictator. And the reason is that anyone who is in, in place of Christ and the, and the spirit of, of Jesus is an antichrist. <clears throat> and I think that uh, we always want to look for a person like a movie set, when in fact there's really two characters that we, who I call prescribed are fully developed by the spirit of, of uh, Satan. <clears throat> and uh, one will be a U.S. president, and that will be the person, by the way, that can, is the only one by the Sanhedrin that can rebuild the Herodian temple, and the other will be a Russian leader, even Alexander uh, the uh, you know the uh, the Tsar Alexander back 500 years ago knew from his special what I call uh, priests and 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 new mystics that he had back in his court back 500 years ago knew that Russia eventually would become the leader of Euro Asia, and they are. I mean, all the new rocket systems for China, all the new uh, jet systems which are designed by Russians, <coughs> massive manufacturing facilities in China. But Russia is a prescient power, and even the oil and gas lines and their bilateral deals with China, it's all Russia who's literally holding all the cards. Precisely. All the cards. And people say, oh, no, I said, look, if the Russians decide to turn off the gas lines going through the Caspian Sea, uh, through the uh, uh, area called the Rokai Tunnel of uh, Georgia, and down mm-hmm. into the areas of Ukraine into uh, Europe, Europe would freeze in the dark. This winter, within weeks, they would literally you see massive starvation, no traffic moving anywhere, industry grind to a halt, and the only a few little spots here and there where the Germans are relying on coal. Otherwise, the North Sea oil is inadequate to supply their needs, and the Mideast is literally a seething mess ready to just blow up. So if the Mideast literally had a hiccup and decided not to be able to produce enough oil and gas, they're totally dependent on Russia. Totally dependent on Russia. Interesting, eh? Very interesting. Thank you, Dr. Deagle. We put it all together. Repent, 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 because the day of the Lord is coming. Our geopolitical leaders are not leaders at all. They are leading us toward the open maw of a volcanic destruction of mankind. We can speak the truth, but the most important thing is that when people hear the truth, they do two things. Ask the right questions. Pray and repent. Repent for our leaders that are liars. Repent for the inaction of our churches that need to speak out. And repent for our politicians that are leading us to destruction by shutting down our southern airspace. Amazing. Thank you, Alexander Bachman. Always remarkable. We'll talk to you again soon. Tomorrow, of course, you'll be on the third hour. And uh, coming up, our...